All right, guys. So today we're going to be doing part two of this little series I'm doing of the install of the seven to 10 inch lift on the Polaris General, also the four inch portals. All right, so pretty much I got everything laid out, as you can see. Just having a little bit of coffee. Went to uh, Harbor Freight this morning, one of my favorite stores in the world. And I got a canopy because it's supposed to be like a 100 degree heat index today. And I was dying last night. Just getting this front end taken apart. So, so far this front end, you can see, got it all apart. Only thing that's left in there is the sway bar. Brake lines I got to take off of the master cylinder. Sorry, I'm trying to get some coffee in before I start this because I know I'm going to be sweating bad. So, I went to O'Reilly's, and the first thing I'm going to start in this video today is put the ball joints in the control arms, upper and lower control arms. And it was a $147 deposit. Instead of buying it, I have a little more money to play because I'm going to put a clutch kit on this. And I don't know how many times I'm going to be using it. But I went ahead and got this little ball joint press set, and you get your money back after you return the tool. So I guess $147 is just the cost of the item if they have to replace it. If you're a douche and you don't take the tools back. So I'll start this video off and we will get these ball joints pressed into these upper and lower control arms. And then we'll go ahead and we'll start tackling this install. So I'm excited. Uh, woke up early, just pumped up, ready to get this done. A nice little vacation for me. Uh, not working right now, so I figured hell. The wife is at work, kids are at school, and I have the whole house to myself. I could work on my toy. Uh, what a better vacation I couldn't ask for more. So, all right guys, let's go ahead and get this thing going. All right, we're about to start this install on the driver side since I finished the passenger side. Guys, very crucial. Make sure you save this stock bolt for your caliper and your brake line. None of the kits come with it. They come with their extended lines. They don't come with this bolt. You're gonna need it. Uh, I said in my first install video, or not install, but when I took this apart, save all your hardware, put it back in all the stock parts. Biggest favor I did to myself because you need all the stock hardware to attach your shocks, your upper and lower control arms, your, what else do you need it for? I mean, you need it for just about everything. So uh, be very careful disassembling your vehicle. Make sure you have all your bolts, save everything. Don't throw anything out until you're finished. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get started. Guys, I'm not a professional mechanic. I'm gonna get in here and I'm gonna do it how I think it's gonna be easy for me to do this by myself on this side. After doing the other side, I think I could do this side in probably two hours, uh, two and a half hours. So I'll obviously have to edit some of this video, but uh, the directions, you may as well just ball them up, throw them out, use it for toilet paper, dry your sweat up with it, whatever you want. But I wouldn't use it for any uh, direction because I did everything on the other side twice. Everything, everything. So uh, yeah, very frustrating, but that's part of the fun of it and the challenge of it, I guess. Once you do it, you know where everything goes and what you need and don't need. So I hope I save you guys some time, I really do. stock hardware save it I just took this off of the uh, stock lower and uh, just note you want to measure from the se center of this camber adjustment to the center of this ball joint and make sure it's within the specs of what the directions tell you
again, I'm just taking the stock hardware out of this stock upper control one. both of our control arms. Now, I guess uh, we'll go ahead and throw the shock in. And then after the shock, we'll go for the rack and put in the tie rod. And I put the axle in last, last time it, it seemed to work. Uh, so I guess I'll do that again. It just is a lot of stuff to be hanging in a way. It was a lot easier for me when I put my uh, bracket for my portals on that holds all this together to manage some of this stuff, use the jack with the block to move it where I needed it as I went. I just loosened this all the way up makes it a hell of a lot easier to compress this shock because <laughs> uh, you got to compress it a little bit at least I did on the other side let's see if I'm luckier over here looks like it's been 20 minutes and we got both of the control arms on obviously the, the ball joints were already pressed in I did that that didn't take too long it was a, a battle don't get me wrong but Without the right tools, if you have the right tools, it'll probably be easy. It wasn't easy for me, but I got them in. I had a lot more, and these things, man, they don't hold like any grease. I called them up, I'm like, man, I'm pumping grease, pumping grease. They're like, oh, it just takes a little bit of grease. I'm like, so it won't come out the bottom of the boot? They're like, no, where the ball goes in, uh, it, it just doesn't take a lot of grease. I'm like, okay. And apparently you could take this top off and these ball joints right here, they're adjustable and you can adjust the, uh, tension on them and really customize the ride of the thing. Uh, I'm just going to leave them how they came unless I notice an issue. This is part of your tie rod and this is what goes to the rack. Now what I did on the other side, and I'll let you know later in the video if it works or not, but I eyed about three eighths of an inch of thread. Here, you want your thread to go to your tie rod because that's your adjustment right there. And then I threaded it in and I kind of just centered it. So you got like about maybe an inch heavy by the end of play right there. And again, I haven't done it. I'll let you guys know in the video if it works. And I loosen this one about the same. Match them, I figure you match them, it'll make your adjustments easier. So about an inch heavy, center your nut so you have the adjustment count your threads if you want looks like I got four threads there and four threads there so all right we're gonna go in right here oh almost forgot something and this can be tricky this is a, a, a steering stop washer I guess so you can't oversteer with it probably gonna have to Fingers crossed that that was their goal. And then I'm gonna try and center my steering wheel. Let me look at the other side. All right, that's centered. Work with it centered, it'll save you some hassle. So I got that on, no problem. 
and uh, went ahead and put this tie rod and now I remember to turn my camera back on. So let's go ahead and uh, get this in. I bolted this together, these two pieces. That's all I've done to this. And then this is gonna slip on this ball joint. Now there's a little notch in your ball joints. You're gonna want to spin that so that it catches that bolt. That bolt slips right through that little notch where this pinch pinches it. So let me make sure I got this right now. What am I doing? You're gonna have to take your stock bolts for the uh, ball joints out of your carrier bearing right here. So I'm really happy I saved all this stuff and was smart enough to thread it all like this because it makes it a lot easier and it takes the guesswork out of what hardware goes where. missed when I was unboxing this. So when you unbox this, taped to the top of your axle box, and I guess it seems like, oh, I wouldn't miss that, but I missed the first one. There's your cotter pin. I don't need it because I have portals, but you're gonna need it if you're using your stock components. get the flanged nut on there so just keep that in mind This isn't in the directions. But you do have to take this dust cover off. Take that off. T25 bit on the torque bit in case my editing gets messed up. Because my battery keeps dying. I got the camera plugged in at the same time. Hopefully it works. Now, another thing it doesn't tell you, and this is a pain. This little rotor cleaner whatever this is it is in the way you'll get everything on and you'll think you got too large of a uh, of a rotor because you'll go in here and you're trying to put this thing on and the rotors stopping by this piece right here so you have got to take this piece off to get your caliper back on that rotor or your bolts are not going to line up on your kit right here on your uh mount kit right there so you're going to need your stock bolts so I hope you saved them all and when you put this rotor on you want the fins facing the front of the machine so get that on now let me show you guys what I'm talking about you go to get this on there now and hopefully your uh, pistons are in for you on your uh, caliper but if they're not you're gonna have to take this off and do that. But if you slide this on there to mount it, all right, so that's all the way in. I try and get my bolts in and you can see my bolts aren't lined up and I could show you it, but you should take my word for it. 
it's gonna rub this rotor the whole time. So it's gotta come off. It is 10 millimeters. And last time I was able to get it off of the ratchet. Let's see if we're lucky enough to get it off again. Quite sure what this thing's for, but see my bleeders here. It's gonna be up top when I mount it. Pretty self-explanatory from there. Like I said, you need to use your stock bolt. All right, guys. Sorry about that. I did make a mistake, and we're gonna go back and we're gonna fix this really quick. We need to put the recessed nut in first. That's gonna hold that axle in. Uh, that was a little bit of a rut row, but at least we caught it before we got any further. You're going to need to throw some lock tightness too. assembly um, that's all of it so if you guys have any questions just comment and I'll let you know give you the best answer I can hope I can help you out all right